reason why I'm recording this session. The reason why I'm recording this session is because some people are unable to make it. Um, and so they would like the opportunity to hear this really important conversation. Uh, so again, if you're just joining me, please join us by turning on your video. Um, that would be great to see your faces. Um, and I thought it was really important to have this session first today before the actual basketball portion to get you in the right frame of mind and ready for tomorrow. Yes, there's another session that's coming up at eight o'clock, also an important session to get you in the right frame of mind. Uh, this one from a mental perspective um, and the other uh, from a basketball, getting you ready to compete uh, tomorrow perspective. Sorry, folks are coming in. Um, slowly but surely at the moment. So in case you're wondering why are we doing this tonight, that is why, to get you in that right frame of mind. Okay, um, I think we have most people here. Uh, people are hopping on. Welcome uh, everyone to uh, Coach Mom's Prep School Showcase. This is the workshop series. Really, really nice to see you. Uh, for those of you uh, that are just joining us, please turn on your camera. Uh, we would love to see your faces. It's important if you're interacting with coaches, uh, very important to be able to speak eyeball to eyeball. I get it. We have Zoom fatigue, but this is for some really uh, important information. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to just quickly um, introduce um, Athletes After COVID workshop. I fielded a lot of uh, questions uh, from student athletes, from parents uh, about, you know, COVID fatigue, about lack of motivation, about worrying about losing a year and what needs to happen next. So that's why I engaged uh, Dr. Laurel Johnson on this conversation. And she delivered a session uh, previously to some clients of mine, um, maybe about a month ago. And I thought it was so instrumental and so important uh, that you also hear this information. Um, I'm going to ask you to, if you have questions, by all means, throw it in the chat box, please. Uh, we will get to those questions at the end um, of the session. And um, of course, the more you're engaged, of, you know, is the more productive this will be uh, for us all. I don't know, uh, um, uh, Dr. Johnson might decide to ask somebody specifically a question. Uh, we shall see, I already see something in that chat box. Okay, uh, Paulo, you already filled it out. Thank you for being, uh, for filling out that information already. Uh, so again, for those of you joining, uh, I am, uh, recording this session to share out with other folks um, that are attending tomorrow or Sunday and unable to make it. Okay, so again, the importance of this conversation uh, brought on Dr. Laurel Johnson, clinical psychologist, um, to get her perspective on, you know, athletes after COVID. So without further ado, can I throw it over to you, Dr. Laurel Johnson? Okay, um, you don't have to call me doctor. Um, I, I like to call you that. I'm sorry, I do, because you are. Okay. All right. I will All right. stop. All right. Sharon and I, uh, coach mom and I, I've learned that you guys reference her as coach mom, but I know her as Sharon. Uh, we went to the university of Toronto together 25. So years ago, um, we were on a very highly competitive basketball team. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm privileged to do this with Sharon. Um, I would do anything for Sharon. So uh, happy, happy to be here. Um, okay, so a little bit about myself. So as I said, I am, I guess, an ex-basketball player. I don't really play anymore. I am 48 years old, not gonna hide that fact. Sharon's true world. Um, and, uh, but um, back when I was your age, I was engaged in the highest level of basketball that was available at that time. Uh, so I did play in all of the provincial system. I played on the Ontario provincial team for many years. Uh, after that, I graduated to play on the junior national team. I played on a student national team for Canada. I played for the University of Toronto. We were in two national championships. I have two silver medals. Yes, not gold medals from that. Um, at that time, the WNBA did not exist. Um, so, and then after my basketball career, was over, then I went to complete my PhD and now I'm a ch uh, clinical child psychologist. But I mean, sport is a very important part of my family's life still. Um, uh, my daughter, she goes to Bill Crothers. So you guys uh, might be aware of that 
prep program. Uh, she's in grade nine there. She just found out yesterday she made the junior prep team um, after a very arduous <laughs> tryout process with 50 kids there after four days. Um, so super proud of her. Um, that's what she went there to do and that's what she's doing. And I know that all of you have very similar goals. Um, and I commend you for those goals. I think that being an athlete is super special. You guys have something special. I mean, I'm the assistant coach of, uh, well, I used to be the assistant coach of my daughter's rep team. And so I used to talk to those uh, young ladies a lot. Are there any females in this group, Sharon? No, all males. I used to talk to them and it's a little bit different for boys than it is for girls, but um, girls at age they hate 13 have a high rate of dropout from sport. Um, and it's too bad. I mean, their interests change. Um, lots of girls have a very high susceptibility to being sucked in to social media um, because they are at a stage of development where they really care about what others think about them more so than boys. Um, and I always tell these girls that, you know what, anyone in the world can be on TikTok. Anyone in the world can be on TikTok. Not everyone can be an athlete particularly a high level athlete. So it's special. So you guys need to like really, you know, I, I, I'm proud of you for, you know, having goals, having dreams and putting some work in to reach those goals. Cause that's why you're here at uh, coach mom showcase this weekend. Okay. So for those of you who haven't turned their video on, I'm going to say it again, please turn your video on so we can interact. This is like a showcase and a showcase means that you want to get seen. Okay. The other thing as a child psychologist, um, having comfortability to putting yourself out there and showing that confidence to do so is a skill. It's a skill that you need to develop. And the more you practice that skill, the easier it will be for you. So I'm going to urge you again, please put yourself out there, turn that video on so that we can see you and we can interact. But for now, I'm gonna share my screen so that I can give you a little bit of information about what we're talking about today. Okay, all right, so. Everyone sees my screen, I'm assuming. Okay, so as Sharon said at the beginning, we're going to talk about kind of all of the angst that people have felt um, through COVID. And now that we're kind of, we're in this stage three, basketball, it, you know, you're allowed to touch each other again. So you can have defenders, you can play some games, you can... You can do a lot more dynamic, interactive stuff than we were able to, technically, <laughs> all of us were able to do before. And so there are a lot of athletes who feel, you know, not the same, not the same as they did previous to the pandemic. So let's talk about that. Okay. So like, it's been a long 17 months, people, right? March 2020 to August 2021, we all know where we were the day that everything got closed down. Um, and it was 17 months ago. I'll use this to put a plug in here right now. Please get vaccinated, um, not just for public health and to keep everybody safe and so we can potentially get uh, over the hump of this virus. But there is a lot of research that has demonstrated the effects of getting COVID on your cardiovascular health and your respiratory health, okay? And as athletes, you don't want that, right? Like this article right here, this middle one, talks about NBA players um, who contracted COVID and are still not where they used to be because of the physiological effects that COVID has had on their systems, both respiratory wise and cardiovascular. And those are an athlete's most important systems, right? They're not, it's not attacking your digestive system or your, you know, elimination system. It is your cardiovascular system and your respiratory system. And that's, that's not good for an athlete. So 
lots of good reasons. Please get vaccinated if you haven't already. Secondarily, you don't want to be that one kid who, you know, shuts down your whole basketball team, right? Okay, just going to say that peer pressure too. All right. Well, let's talk about the effects of the isolation, like 17 months. It was pretty much 15 months of isolation. Everything shut down. Um, and, you know, we were expected to participate in Zoom training sessions and kind of try to keep up your skills, your ball handling skills, maybe your like, you know, shot release um, skills. Some people didn't have training conditions that allowed them to do sports specific training or any type of training, frankly, um, because this was the effect. Like there was, there was nothing organized. There was no competition. You lost your connection with your team, right? And your coach. And you potentially didn't have any training ability at home, right? Like weights, um, like obviously doing resistance training is super important. Um, but, but other like plyometric training, all those sorts of things require some equipment. So what does this all amount to? It amounts to something called detraining that you will have lost some physical ability through that. Like, even if you're training by yourself, you have to admit it's not at the same level of intensity as if you were being held accountable by a coach or by your teammates, right? So there was a lot of detraining that happened during the COVID isolation period. So that's the phys physical kind of effects. Well, what about the mental health? So a lot of the research that's coming out, and it's just a little bit of research. I don't want to bore you with research studies because you guys don't care so much about that. But what I do want to highlight is that some athletes, and only you will know if you were one of them, maybe you've bounced back by now because you're participating in this showcase, but this actually did happen to my daughter who bounced back now because she's now playing for Bill Carruthers but she lost her identity as an athlete during the COVID pandemic. She didn't have access to basketball and all the reasons that she played basketball were taken away from her. She played basketball. She's not playing basketball. And I suspect you guys don't play basketball to you know, master your ball handling combinations in isolation. I highly doubt that's why you play basketball. You might be very good at it, but that only goes so far. You probably got pretty bored of doing the same combos, right? Um, you don't play basketball for that. You play basketball for the competition, for the feelings of success when you make a good move, when you you make a, uh, you, uh, make a steal, you block a shot, you get a rebound, you score a basket, you get a great assist. That's all positive reinforcing successes that you feel that keeps you wanting to play. That's what you get your high from. That's your rush of adrenaline. That's awesome. That's why you play. None of that happened, right? You didn't have any of those positive things to reinforce you and keep your passion about the game. You lost contact, the social aspect of basketball. You lost contact with your teammates, right? You play, you don't run, you don't do long distance running, right? You don't play tennis. You don't do an individual sport. You like that there's a team around you and you lost that too. So when all of that was gone, one of the effects was that these athletes just lost their identity about being an athlete. Like, I don't, I'm not really an athlete anymore. I'm not a basketball player. And my daughter had a decision to make because she also got into a science program at another school. And she had to decide whether she was gonna go to Crothers, the sports school or the science school. And she chose the science school, of course, until I stepped in, I said, yeah, I don't think so. Um, because she wasn't old enough to make that decision, we weren't going to allow COVID and this effect make her make the wrong decision about her future because she was not ready to give up her athlete, athletic identity. She just didn't see it at the time. So anyways, I wanted to point that piece out. I'm hoping because you guys are all here in this showcase that if this did happen to you, you've bounced back from it. If you haven't yet, never fear. 
it's not uncommon, you can still bounce back from this. This one is just talking about that some athletes experience the pandemic as if it was a trauma, a trauma event. And they experience all these types of symptoms similar to what would be associated if you experienced a traumatic event. But most interestingly, levels of depression and anxiety have gone up. I'm a child psychologist. I can't even keep up with the demand of my services right now. It's not just among athletes. It's among everybody that the social isolation, if anybody has anxiety, they like being isolated, especially if you're socially anxious. You like being isolated because you don't need to deal with your anxiety. Anxiety doesn't feel good. So it's okay with you to be isolated in your home away from everybody else. Is that helping your anxiety? Absolutely not. The moment things opened up again, these people had really big trouble reintegrating back into society, right? Depression, same thing. Those are who, people who are depressed. They're happy staying in bed all day. Like they don't want to do anything else right? But that's not going to work for you because it decreases your functioning. You can't function in society like that. The pandemic gave you excuse to do that for days and weeks and months on end, but you can't continue to function like that. So depression and anxiety have increased significantly in everybody due to the pandemic. This is all, these are all the things you need to pay attention to if you're having mental health difficulties. This is what it looks like and what it feels like. You can't sleep or, or, or you're sleeping too much, right? Getting behind in things because you procrastinate, you're cranky, you're irritable, you have stress and pressure, you can't concentrate, you can't shut your mind off, all those sorts of things, right? So those things you need to pay attention to if you're experiencing these things. What athletes in particular, how they're particularly affected is around distraction, less concentration, and they're less alert and have slower response time and poor decisions. Can you imagine you're on the basketball court and you can't concentrate, you're not alert, and you have slow response time? At your level where it's fast, right? That's going to be a problem for you, right? Let alone the poor eating, sleep disturbance, negative thinking, fatigue, decreased motivation, right? Those are the ways that mental health difficulties can affect you as an athlete. I want to talk about this concept quickly because I think it's really important for people to appreciate that athletes who are experiencing mental health problems, it's like they're injured, just like they have a physical injury, right? And if you don't treat it, if you, if you think that those things are not important to treat, all those symptoms that I put up on the previous slide, then it's going to impact your training and your, your competition skills. But let me talk about this, like speaking about injury, I wanted to then transition into, you know, the research around recovery from injury in sport, because one of the things that Sharon says she heard a lot of anxiety around is that detraining, right? Like how much have I lost? How much has my kid lost by, you know, not competing for the past year and a bit, right? And that happens to a lot of athletes when they get physically injured, right? Think of all your favorite NBA athletes, how many of them have been out for significant periods of time because of serious injuries, right? Now, the recovery level will depend on the type of injury. Like some injuries are just really hard to come back from and be, and then you can perform at your pre-injury level. But it's also the type of athlete, your body type. How much in condition were you before? What's your stature like? So it's really hard to say. But what you can be assured of is that, you know, with a solid recovery plan, athletes do regain pre-injury levels safely and quickly. Look at Kevin Durant. Look how 
how devastating that injury was for him. Has he lost a beat? Anyone? Anyone? There yet, right? He hasn't. He hasn't. He's still one of the greatest players in the NBA, right? Um, but then you have like the players like Kawhi, he's injured again, right? His body type's different. His knees bow out a little bit more. He's more susceptible. So he's having a little bit harder time maintaining kind of health so that he can continue to perform at a high level. So everything's really different. But when you think about, do athletes lose a lot of performance ability because they've been out for a long time? Not necessarily, right? So that's what I want you to think about when you worry <laughs> that you might not be at the same level. Like I know a lot of kids who are playing in the AAU going down to the States, they're like, oh crap, right? All these American kids, they've been playing all through. And now what does that mean? Like, I'm going to look like terrible compared to them, right? Maybe at first, but you'll bounce back. You've got to manage your stress around these things, right? And, you know, I, I put this in here because it's not just managing your stress around feeling that you might have lost something after COVID, but stress management for an athlete in high, comp high level competitions is super critical, right? Super critical. Um, you have to be able to practice stress management. And here are some kind of just different stress management techniques, um, that you can look up and, and practice, but it's really important. This last one called progressive muscle relaxation. I have a really good example of how beneficial this is. True story. Before COVID and everything shut down, um, my daughter was playing on her rep team. Uh, they were down by one point. She has the ball and she's fouled. Okay. She has to go to free throw line. There's like 26 seconds left on the clock. How stressed is she? She was like 12 at this, at this point, like 12 year old <laughs> has the game on her shoulders, right? How stressed is that? What happens when you get stressed? There's a lot of physiological things happening in your body, right? Your heart starts pumping faster. you you start sweating more. Your muscles get tense. How many of you have been stressed at the free throw line? Does your free throw go short or does it go long? It goes short, always, because your muscles are contracting, they're not free, and you don't give as much power. You think you're shooting it the same way you always have, but you're not, it will be short. So how do you combat this stress, right? How do you combat the physiological effects of stress during a game situation? One, you can adjust by just shooting a little bit harder. Like now you're, you're aiming for like the backboard instead of the middle of the basket, right? <laughs> like mentally, you're going to trick your trick yourself and then shoot it a little bit harder because you know, your, your muscles are all tense. Okay. That's one way you can do it. The second way is to get the tension out of your muscles, right? Which is the way I rec method I recommend. It's called progressive muscle relaxation. And how you get tension out of your muscles is that you have to contract them and hold them really tight until you start feeling them like you can't hold it anymore and then release it. And it will release all the tension out of your muscles. So... I see Juliana, I mean, I'm a child psychologist, unfortunately for her, she's subjected to unsolicited psychology. I've already taught her this. And lo and behold, I'm on the bench and she's at that free throw line and I can see her tensing up her muscles. As everyone's lining up, she is tensing and she's shaking it out. And I'm like, oh my God, she's doing progressive muscle relaxation. Does she hit both her shots? Yes, she does. And she wins the game. Um, so it's just a really good, I was super impressed with her. I wasn't yelling that from the sideline, which is a miracle because I yell everything from the sideline. But these are the types of things that, you know, you can pick up as an athlete to get yourself just to that next level. Oh, sorry. This one, this other one, positive self-talk is also super important, right? Because if you're feeling that you're behind, if you're feeling you might not be as good as that kid, right? Like 
Devin, you look like you got mad skills just by looking at you. I'd be looking at you and be like, oh, I'm going to be intimidated by that guy. He looks like he's got mad skills, right? First of all, you can't tell how, any, how somebody plays by just looking at them. That's another lesson for another day. Um, but anyway, <laughs> but you have to replace your negative self-talk, which is so easy to do, doubting yourself, lacking confidence, comparing yourself self to others. That breeds negativity. You have to train your brain and fight against that negative self-talk and replace it with more positive messages. So if you get to the free throw line and you're like, oh, I'm not going to make this basket, right? You have to change that to, I'm going to make this shot. You have to sit, tell things to yourself like, you know what? So I used to say to myself, this is a little bit of, you know, into my own brain. I used to walk onto the court. I used to look at the opposing team and I used to say to myself, these players have no business being on the same court as me. Like I used to be like, take it to that cocky level, right? Um, the self-talk to get yourself into a mental state of mind is super powerful. Who watched the Michael Jordan documentary? Who remembers that story he told about how he told a lie to himself basically to get him into the mental mindset against his opposing player. I can't remember who it was now. Basically said, though, that guy said something about me, right? I can't remember the story that was so long ago. But essentially he said his, his self-talk was so powerful for him. He would lie to himself to get himself mad at the other player because that took up his, his performance. He's like, I'm going to get you, right? you know, F you, you don't deserve to play against me, right? I, whatever, whatever it took, Jordan, just put it in his mind, right? He was so strong mentally, mentally, he was a rock, right? And he, in that documentary, he gave you some insight into things that went on into, in his brain that kept him at that high level. It's mental right? So thinking about whether you're struggling with any mental health, um, you've got to get that attended to because it's going to affect your training and competition. You've got to really be kind of mindful. We call it mindfulness practice to get yourself into a state of relaxation. So you're not stressed, right? And then positive self-talk, right? These are really key sports psychology um, kind of aspects that could really help you as a high performing athlete. But really, I want you to go away with a message that athletes can bounce back, right? After being away for a long period of time, we can bounce back as athletes. Think about the research on injury recovery. Just know that athletes are resilient, right? You're born, right? As an athlete, to play against adversity. That's what resilience is, right? That's a part of who you are. So be that person. The other thing is when you're feeling unsure about your athletic ability and where your skills are, focus on your fitness. A focus on fitness goes a long way because you all must remember a time where you were feeling so good on that court. Like you were fast, you were like agile, mobile, like you were like, just, you were tired, right? All game. Like how great of a game is that? How great a feeling is that? Like no one can stop you. That gives you a lot of confidence. It allows you then to take risks. Those people who are not fit, it affects your decision-making. That's the first thing that goes. You'll start getting fatigued and you won't make good decisions. And then you'll start slowing down then you'll start, you know, not being able to keep up and, and performing at the level that, that you expect of yourself. But you have to also increase your exposure to experiencing experiences that will be reinforcing. That means you need to get out and play, play against other people. That's why you play basketball. That will you know, get you back into the swing of things. You'll bounce back. You'll get your groove back, whatever you want to say about it. You've got to keep playing, do as much as you can. Right. And I know Sharon has a lot of different opportunities for athletes. 
get involved in everything that you possibly can. Other things, you know, I just wanted to, to talk about is, you know, you're participating in this showcase because you have some goals, right? You have some goals potentially of getting to a prep program and then going beyond that potentially. But you have to think about that and be, be, be really aware of what your goals are, right? And, and not just those long-term goals, but who do you want to be as a person, right? And like I said earlier, being an athlete is special, right? Don't be that kid who's, and I see Alex on your awesome gaming chair, love the gaming chair, bud. But you know what that means to me? <laughs> We're spending too much time playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't judge you. I, I promise to get my son a gaming chair, but, uh, but <laughs> he still has to do his other stuff. But so yeah, for girls, it's social media for boys, it's video games, right? So you just need to, everyone in the world could play video games, right? Everyone, uh, maybe not at high levels. That is a skill too. I'll give those people respect. Um, but is that who you want to be? If you want to be a gamer, go be a gamer. Right. But you can't you can't be both at a high level. So think about that. Do you want to be special? Do you want to be an athlete? Do you want to be proud that you got into a prep prep program? That stuff is super special. It's not so no one's no one is impressed about how well you did in Mortal Kombat. OK, just uh, maybe your be best buddies are, but not too many people after that. Set small, achievable goals. Right you have to start experiencing success again. When my daughter got back on the basketball court feeling really rusty and nervous, don't take your outside, don't take a three right now. <laughs> the three is rusty. Get into the key. Increase your chance of success by shooting a higher percentage shot. So during the showcase this weekend, hide your weaknesses, right? Don't be like, floating out onto the three-point line if your three-pointer isn't on on point right now right cut drive rebound get into the key where the highest percentage shots happen good things happen in the key okay so that's my basketball tip from me to you the other thing you need to do, and if you have a training plan outside of your team, or if you need one because you're not, don't have a team right now that's regularly meeting and training, is that you have to make your own plan. You have to make a schedule for yourself and you have to stick to it. And the accountability to that, your parents, you, your brother, those are very weak accountabilities. You need someone else who's going to keep you accountable if you want to increase the chance that you're going to stick to your plan and your schedule. So you need to think about even if your coach is not getting together, can you get your coach to make you a schedule and a plan? And then you send that into them, right? As a psychologist, I've worked with athletes who I'm their accountability. They text me their stuff that they've done because they just need to be accountable to someone other than themselves and their mom and dad, right? Sharon can be an accountability, right? So though you got to find somebody external who will increase the, the accountability to your training plan. So those are the, um, the points that I wanted to talk about today. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can hopefully see you beautiful people. Um, and yeah, and I just wanted to, well, I hope that was helpful and informative. I hope that you took something away from that um, that will benefit you. I will ask if anyone has any questions, if anyone has any comments about, about what you heard today, about your own experience, about what you want to know more about, what you're worried about, anything like that. Nate. We the North in the background. <laughs> Good. What'd you think? Um, I don't know. Did I learn some stuff? Yeah. Did, what did you take? One thing that you took from um, from what I said. I learned about what COVID attacks on athletes. Yeah. Bounce back from it. 
Yeah. Have you bounced back? Uh, yes. Awesome. Perfect. Who else? Gamer, Alex. <laughs> um, so I the headphones and everything. Man. Oh, I got everything. It's all set up. It's all set up. But, but I hear you. But I hear you Alex, clear. In, in Alex's defense, Alex is not a player. Alex is supporting <laughs> the showcase. He was a oh. player in the showcase previously. So yeah. he's back to help support the showcase in its entirety. So in his defense, he's oh, done yes. his playing. Yes. He still yeah, coaches, et cetera. So I have to defend. I have to defend my people. Fair. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. I did take something from your, your webinar, however, <laughs> and that's more or less the importance of showing off my strengths and being a little more conservative with my weaknesses. I think it's easy to give away or try things that you're not exactly strong at. And in the end, it kind of like blows up in your face. And you're like, oh, maybe yeah. that wasn't the best. That Maybe that was very ambitious on my part to try and do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just kind of humble yourself a little bit and know where your strengths are. Not saying that you can't try new things, but yeah. it's that in the background, this is that's your opportunity to develop them. It's the One. balance between taking risks mm -hmm. and playing smart. Exactly. Right? exactly. And that takes a lot of experience to understand that balance. When can I take a risk and maybe try something versus, you know what, that wasn't very smart. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I think definitely um, a lot of uh, players, you guys will, will be put in that position where it's like, okay, am I taking a risk or am, am I playing a little out of my comfort, like way out of my comfort zone? Yeah. And here's the other thing I'll tell you, what research has shown, and not just in athletes, but actually in males in general, and I'm going to say <laughs> males in general, and it's a lot of research from the business world. Males more often have a lot of confidence, more confidence in their abilities than they actually have right? Like, so CEOs or executives will say, oh yeah, I can do that when they can't, they don't know that they can, but they don't, they say they can do it because they actually believe they're the shit, right? They may not be the shit. And so I do, and I thought I have a son too, and he thinks he's, he's the shit, right? And I, yeah. It's such a different mentality between my daughter and my son, but it is males in general. So also appreciate that there's one thing about confidence, but there's the other thing about you need to actually reflect on what your abilities are, a realistic reflection, so that you're not just blind to it, that you just think, oh, I'm the shit, I can do whatever, right? You won't learn and grow if you think you already can do everything. Right? 100%, 100%. Yeah. And I, I think if I could add a little to that, I think also in a, in a player's mindset, at least, in a position of, let's say, the showcase, you're going to have people watching you, people that, you know, maybe an opportunity will come out of this for you. And I think that that fear that it's like, I don't have that trait and I should. So I'm going to try it anyways. Meanwhile, I could just harm kind of what you have, what you're showing, what you're showcasing. It's not you. It's showcasing what you want. And in this opportunity, you want to showcase your strengths. So I think here, again, like I said, it's going to pose a lot of scenarios for a lot of players because, you, there's going to be that fear, that pressure that people are watching. You. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Yeah. People oh, are yeah. watching you For and sure. they'll, they'll see it all. My daughter came back from trials. She's like, every time I do something good, they're not watching. Every time I score, they are watching. They're not, sorry. Every time I score, they're not watching. Every time I don't score, right. Yeah. They watch. And everyone thinks that, but one coaches are not just looking at how many times you put the ball in the basket, mm -hmm. right? They're looking at a lot of different things that shows that you are an athlete, that you know how to play. You look like you know how to play just in general, not just putting the bat. I mean, I, I can see players who miss layups. Yes, not good to miss layups. Don't miss any layups, particularly uncontested layups. That just looks really bad. But I mean, if they're contested layups, you're not going to make them all, right? Particularly when there aren't refs and they're not going to be calling fouls. But so most of the time, it's about how you got there during this time. Don't get so stressed out if you didn't finish. Although I certainly recommend finishing, right? You don't want to have a hundred dollar move in a, <laughs> a zero, zero worth shot. Um, 
but yeah, absolutely. if I can jump in, um, it's, it's coach mom, everyone. Uh, the other part of injury that I like to, cause I remember when, um, Laurel did this session, uh, as I mentioned with some other clients of mine and, you know, I thought about injury as well. You're just coming back. And so one of my pet peeves and especially for tomorrow, um, and for Sunday, really important that you get your body prepared to then execute. It's really difficult to go from zero to a hundred if your body isn't ready to do that, right? So, and, and I say this specifically too, when you're on your own, I try to teach athletes how to take care of their body when they're not under the tutelage of a coach. So when your coach isn't there, you know how to do the stuff, right? We'll, in the showcase, we'll absolutely get you a nice solid warm up um, with the, uh, with the, um, the, the athletic therapist, the performance therapist um, as well. But these are things that you need to do on your own so you can prevent injury. So I started to talk really quickly about, you're just coming back from COVID. Yes, I know some of you have already been out to two, three tournaments already. Um, and when you are in those tournament environment, you barely get two minutes on the court to start playing. Find a corner, get yourself warm, stretch, water up after your, your game, your practices, do those pieces. And that can limit or reduce the possibility of injuries. Again, especially after potentially sitting, you know, for 15 months. And I know some of you were working out in your basement and, you know, working out in a gym or going outside as much as you could, um, weather permitting, of course, but take, learn to take care of your body and understand that, you know, getting a solid, you know, warm up can also help deter uh, um, injuries. So that's my sermon for today. Yeah. No, no one wants injury. 100%. All right. Any other kind of questions, thoughts, things they might want to share? You can throw it in the chat box if you're interested, by all means. We've got this expertise, gentlemen. Let's use it. Let's take advantage of it. Let's capitalize on it. Any questions? Uh, I, I could pose a question if that's possible. Okay. So, so, Laurel, when managing stress and anxiety at a game, what are some ways that you would... I know you recommend like the tensing up method, but yeah. sometimes maybe perhaps you feel a little uncomfortable. You're in a very public environment. Maybe you don't want people to stare at you a little funny if you're there like tensing up as hard as you can. Um, what are other ways that you could recommend maybe perhaps a breathing technique of some sorts to kind of decrease the anxiety feel leading up to a, a game? Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, I can appreciate, I could see my daughter tensing her muscles. It doesn't have to be like a major. She, she was just tensing. Steve Nash, he just does his like shadow, right? His, right. That's he, before every he, the, he's just trying to get, get the flow before every free throw. Steve Nash did that. Um, to, to get, okay. Breathing. I mean, getting mindfulness practice is about getting control of your brain. When your brain has control of you, when you're feeling anxious, everything is getting all crazy in your brain. All these thoughts are coming in. You're feeling really stressed. You need to calm, right? So mindfulness practice is about getting control of your brain calming it down and being fully present in this current moment. It's not thinking about what just happened in the past. It's not thinking about, oh my God, is that person, am I going to be guarding that person or what's going to happen in the future? It's about focusing on the current moment. That's how you get really calm and mindful. How do you do that? You have to think about your five senses. So what are you seeing right now? What are you hearing right now? What are you feeling right now, right? And really getting that type of focus is a skill you have to practice because it's not normal for humans to go around and do that. You just kind of, and your mind's going all over the place, right? Like humans are time travelers. They can think about the past and they can think about the future, right? And other animals don't do that. They, they're, they're in the present moment, unless they've experienced some trauma and they get triggered by, by something that, you know, makes them think that of, of a traumatic experience, but essentially your pet dog and cat are only living in the current moment. They don't worry about the past and they don't worry about the future. Only humans do that, which causes us trouble sometimes, right? 
So you have to train your brain to get into a current or a present moment mindset. There are a lot of different mindfulness practices. You can look them up online. There are apps for that. The best one that I've ever seen is an app called Headspace. Uh, the first 10 sessions are free. Put your big ass headphones on. And like you see, like I, like I watch tennis and I see all these tennis players. They're coming out onto the court, like Naomi Osaka, Bianca Andrescu. They have big headphones on because they are trying to stay mindful. They want to block out all that stuff. And they're focused on that music that's in their ears at that very moment, right? That's their mindfulness practice. So you see some NBA players, they, they warm up with headphones as well, right? They're trying to stay mindful. So mindfulness practice, get an app, start training your brain. And then you will get more control of your brain in times of stress. And it's about, okay. And breathing is, breathing is, yes, breathing has a physiological consequence of slowing everything down when you can control your breathing. But the other reason why breathing is typically used in meditation and mindfulness is because you always have your breath with you, right? Like some people use stress balls or whatnot, but sometimes you don't have that. You always have your breath. Right. So that's all why it's, it's commonly used as um, as one of those tools to help you get mindful, but also has the secondary physiological effect of actually slowing down your system, because with stress, your heart starts pumping and things start getting really, really quick. Right. So absolutely. I call it mindfulness practice because there's so many ways that you can become mindful. You got to find a practice that works for you. OK, thank you. Any other questions? I hope that even like, look, I know it's not normal for kids your age to think about mental health and psychology and all that kind of stuff. It's just not right. You, I hope you're happy go lucky <laughs> athletes who are well adjusted and doing well. So I know that that's not something that you typically put a lot of your mind towards. But I'm hoping that listening today, that it gives you something that, you know, if you're thinking later that maybe I do need to work on something, this aspect, right? Never thought of it before, but you know, that lady, she said something about this. Um, I, I hope that that serves you well. I hope that serves you well one day. Because one of four of you are anxious. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> this is very, very common. Okay, well, we're not going to drag this out at all because you do have another session uh, with myself uh, at eight o'clock. Um, and so, if you have no other question, I just want to extend a huge thank you uh, to Laurel for uh, coming on and get you again in that right frame of mind to get ready for tomorrow, or if you're playing on Sunday, again, to get ready. Um, I'll just throw out some tidbits with respect to uh, the showcase. Yes, there's gonna be coaches in person. Yes, there's gonna be coaches watching on stream, but I thought that was really helpful information. Uh, Laurel sharing, just get in your zone, right? Get in your zone and stick to what you do best. When you go to showcases, these are not the time to practice those things that you're not very good at, right? Not the time to do that technically. So again, if you're serious about it, if you're just coming for the experience, not a problem. But if you're really looking to potentially get recruited to the next level, you want to show, it doesn't mean you're not going to make a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes and mistakes are okay. Let's, you know, let's just say that you can't make a ton of mistakes though. Let's be clear on that, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's when coaches tend to say, have a seat right beside me or talk to the assistant coach because they've got to fill you in on some stuff. Okay. But get ready for, you know, for the weekend, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be competitive. And I, the, you know, if I can leave you with anything is competitiveness. Coaches want to see a kid that is competitive and if you are only focused on scoring, 
that's a problem. It's great, I get it. The store, the stores get the, you know, seem to get the limelight, but at the next level, if you can't defend your position, for example, that's different. That's problem making team. So think about those little tidbits for again for tomorrow um, and for Sunday. And I hope to see you all at the next session. Um, so Laurel, thank you very much. A round of applause or do a clock yeah. in. Really, 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 really appreciate your time. Yeah. Um, and you know what? If you need to reach out to her after this, by all means, you know, shoot me an email. Must many of you message me anyways on on IG and I can definitely share contact information if you're interested um, in connecting with her any further. Not okay. you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks everybody. Thanks, we'll see you good shortly. luck. Good luck. Take care, guys. Okay. Best of luck. See Alrighty. you guys this weekend. Thank you, Laurel. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.